My husband and I have five kids and our two youngest are autistic. And this video compares our two autistic boys when they were one year old. Now with each of them, we didn't know that they were autistic at the time. So I guess it's good that we're just that crazy family that always takes video of our children. Ezra, our seven year old, has level three autism, which mainly means he just needs a little bit more help. He's nonverbal and communicates through an iPad. And Simon, our three year old, has level one autism, which mainly means he needs a little less help and he has no intellectual delay. So this video is 12 signs of autism in a one year old. We'll be comparing level one and level three autism. Please remember that the autism spectrum is very broad. And these are just examples from two children. Autism may look extremely different on another child. Some of these signs, both of my children have, and some of them just one half. Remember your child must have a deficit in three areas to even consider that they're autistic. These areas are social, communication, and repetitive or restrictive behaviors or interests. You must have deficits in all three of these for it to be autism. The first sign is late motor skills. Now Simon with level one autism did not have late motor skills. He was right on time with all of his milestones. But Ezra, you can see in this video when he was about 12 months old. So close, you can do it. <laughs> help a lot, made a big difference when we got him into physical therapy. Look how cute he is. Oh, you doing big work? Yeah. Doing big work. Sign two is limited babbling. Again, Simon did not have this sign. He babbled quite a bit. Simon, are you having a good... Are you having a good Easter? Do you like... Yeah? Oh. Do you like getting Easter eggs? In this video, Ezra is one year old and I try to get his attention. I even get a little eye contact. Let's see if we can get him to babble. You are so cute. <laughs> Ma? Still to this day at seven years old, the noises he makes really aren't considered babbling. Sign three is not looking up on their own. Just watch Simon with these Easter eggs. Where'd they come from? Uh, came from the floor. Mommy, Guys, the let's just put these up. The Everyone put your baskets in front of me. You can see in these videos, Simon is not looking up. Both Ezra and Simon had the same sign when they were one year old. Simon has really learned to look up quite a bit. Now that he's three years old, he looks up a lot. Ezra usually doesn't look up unless he's highly motivated to. A lot of times a neurotypical child that's excited about a new toy or a new experience will share that experience. Whether they show you the toy, they will look up, usually make eye contact and want to see your expression of the thing that they're showing. They wanna share that experience, that moment. And I saw in both Ezra and Simon when they were one year old, this was not a natural thing to do. They would be excited about what was in front of them, but sharing the experience didn't really seem like it was a priority for them at one year old. Sign four is not looking at the camera. Now look at all these photos. One after another, Ezra has no pictures where he's one year old and looking at the camera and smiling. Simon has a few, but especially with family pictures, when it counted, it was so difficult to get Ezra or Simon to look at the camera at one year old. Now don't panic, oh no, my child doesn't look at the camera, therefore he has autism. You can go through your pictures and if you have hundreds of pictures and absolutely none of them where your child's looking at the camera, that is one sign that there's a possible deficit in the social category. But remember your child has to have signs in all three categories for it to be autism. It was easier for me to get one-year-old Simon to look at the camera when he was all by himself and there wasn't all these distractions and things. With this particular photo, we got lucky. Sign five is doesn't want to hold hands. This is something that all of my children had done. But with Ezra and Simon, when they were both one-year-old, 
there was never a time where they came and wanted to hold my hand unless they were grabbing my hand to lead me somewhere for something that they wanted. And so what I'm discussing now is holding my hand simply because they want to hold your hand for comfort. That's something that both my autistic sons just didn't do when they were one year old. You can see here, we are actually having a picnic for Mark's birthday, Mark's my oldest son. And we have an ice cream cake there. And afterwards we go for a walk and Simon does not want to hold Mark's hand. So Mark holds on to his wrist. It's something that naturally happens, especially when you have a child who will not hold on to your hand for very long and seemingly doesn't like it. Now there are plenty of autistic kids out there that like holding people's hands. And there's lots of kids without autism that don't hold your hand. But I wanted to include this one because all three of my older kids who don't have autism, they would hold onto my hand by the time they were one year old. They had learned that skill and they were comfortable with it. But both Ezra and Simon still did not like holding my hand by the time they were one. Now that Simon's three, he holds my hand great. He actually will come and hold my hand on his own. Ezra, on the other hand, we always have him on a toddler leash if we are outside of the house, especially on a hike, going places. We, we hike a lot because we actually lived in an RV. When Simon was just one year old, we moved into an RV, we sold our house. It was after a near-death experience that Ezra had. You can see that video here. And we just really wanted to focus on experiences instead of possessions. So we visited all the national parks with our kids, five kids in an RV. We post daily, so please consider subscribing. Sign six is looks at your lips. This might seem like an odd thing and something that you might not even notice. But if you're one year old, when they look at your face, if they don't look in your eyes, but they look at your lips instead, that is a sign of autism. It makes sense in a logical way that a child, a baby, a toddler would look at the part of your face that's moving, right? A lot of neurotypical kids at a very young age will understand that, that eye contact is really important for communication and understanding what the other person's trying to communicate. But both my autistic kids really had to learn this skill of not looking at my lips, but looking at my eyes instead. We don't have a lot of video of this, but I do have video of Ezra looking at my lips right here. Yeah. <laughs> do you need a little help? You can see right here, he is not yet one year old and he's looking at my lips instead of looking me in the eye. Okay, roll off. <gasps> Please put in the comments what you think about this sign. Do you think it's actually a sign of autism? Sign seven is content with being alone. So if you have a one-year-old who is content all by themselves and doesn't seem to care or notice that someone entered the room, doesn't try and get your attention repetitively, that is a sign of autism. Ezra especially would be very content with an activity like this or crawling to try and get something. He would do this for hours and he usually wouldn't look up. He wouldn't try and get someone's attention. He'd be content all by himself. Simon too would be very content at one years old. Simon has four older siblings and though he loves being social with them, if he had a toy that would keep him busy, then he could be content for hours. Sign eight is selective interests. So this is not just, oh, I have a favorite teddy bear or a favorite blanket that I like to put around me and hold everywhere. That's not what I'm talking about. For Christmas, when Ezra was one year old, he got a bunch of toys. You can see he got a bunch of little dinosaurs. He got cars, things like that. And he wasn't really interested in them. Once he saw all of his toys, the only thing he wanted was the most random thing. You see this farm that he got from his grandma. We took it out and we gave him all the farm animals and the farm to put the animals in. We showed him how to open and close the door. There were things that made sounds and, and lights and stuff that light up. And the only thing that Ezra wanted was this bale of hay. He liked the rivets of the bale of hay and he would carry this one bale of hay around everywhere. He would cry if he couldn't get it, if it went underneath the couch. He was obsessed with this bale of hay and he loved taking the bale of hay and like rubbing it in his hands. He had this repetitive restrictive movement and this kind of obsession with the feeling that the rivets would have on his fingers. So that is a sign of autism. That is a very selective interest and it's actually quite odd. I actually considered buying that whole set again so we could get another bale of hay but I didn't do it. Sign nine is the side eye. This is a major indicator that something is wrong with sight, whether it's the information that you're getting or whether it's your eyes. Now with both of our kids, they had perfect eyesight when it came to their eye doctor appointments. The ophthalmologist would always say, they have 20-20, great eyesight. And so when our children wouldn't look us in the eye or would give us that side eye, then that is a sign that the child may be overstimulated visually. Ezra is overstimulated visually. 
and that's why he has a hard time looking people in the eye. There's so much information coming to him, too much detail that he can look at it and concentrate better if he only looks through the sides of his eye. We don't have video of this, but this is a great picture to show you what he would do all the time. Sign 10 is eloping. Now this can be a really scary thing. Ezra and Simon both eloped when they were one. Simon, not anymore but Ezra will now still elope. And what that means is they will go away. They will just walk away. You can see here that Simon is one year old and he's in a really fun playground with his siblings that he loves to play with. And he just leaves, he just walks away. Eloping doesn't necessarily mean that he has a specific reason why he's leaving or that he has a specific place in mind that he's going. He just leaves. It's a significant worry. It's something that we would worry about all the time, especially at night. So we ended up getting Ezra a like hospital grade legit safety bed. We have a movie about it here. Sign 11 is toe walking. This is something that Ezra never did. And yet Simon did it all the time. He's like, well, it's just mine. <laughs> He's like, I'm not gonna let it go. <laughs> this is good stuff. <laughs> oh, you don't want us to bother you, huh? Okay, fine. <laughs> We'll leave you alone. And he still toe walks even when he's just standing there. We were really worried about the growth of his foot, so we ended up getting braces for him. And they're non-invasive. They're the kind that's more just preventing him from having any problems in the future. You can see that video here where we talk about why we ended up doing braces. Put in the comments what you think about braces for toe walking. We do appreciate your opinions. Our 12 sign is one that I wasn't really quite sure I wanted to put on here. It's something that only my autistic kids did and my three older kids never did, but it is something that a lot of neurotypical kids will do at one year old. So with that warning there, it's lining things up and organizing things even at one year old. Now I would like to stress that this isn't just organizing your dolls or organizing your cars in a line. That's not necessarily a sign of autism, but I want you to think about this. Does your child have to have it in a line? Does your child have to have their cars in a line and organized by color? For example, does it cause anxiety if they're not in a line? That's where, in my opinion, as a mom of two autistic kids, that's where the autism comes in, is they feel the need to have things in a line and it's so important that things are organized to the point that anxiety comes if they're not. Right here is five signs of autism in babies. 